Specialist, and this is part four of the series of impact of parental alienation. And today we're going to talk about professionals. Now, professionals can come into a parental alienation case in any number of ways. It may be that they are the GP who sees the family and they may raise concerns, or they may be used um, as part of the alienating parents plan. Um, it could be social workers involved, it could be CAFCAS, it could be mental health workers, judges, solicitors, any number of professionals can be involved, including support services when false allegations are made. Um, and what's happening at the moment is I'm hearing time and time again of how it's not being recognised and we are supporting the alienation. And as a fellow professional, it really pains me because this is our profession as a social worker we have a hard enough time anyway and when you're hearing stories of how social workers are leaving children in the care of abusers which is what parental alienation is it is emotional sometimes physical and sexual abuse as well and we're leaving them with these people and it really pains me because everyone's going to be slagging social workers off. They do anyway, but with good reason in some of these cases. And I don't say that easily. I don't say that for effect, and I don't say that to be um, controversial in any way. I say it because this is what I'm dealing with. This is, this, this, the cases I'm hearing are so glaringly obvious that something isn't right, and yet it's being missed. I'm going to give you a few examples of taking children's words there and then so when you're it's very difficult because of time constraints but if you're working on with someone on wishes and feelings you need to build rapport with these kids you need them to trust you you need to get to know them you can't just go in sit down with them and say okay what do you want because they don't know you they're going to say what either they've been told to say or they're just not going to know what to say and sometimes if they're very clear on what they want that can be a warning sign in itself because if you think about this logically a parent has been removed from their life someone who they love and someone who cared for them is no longer in their life if that parent had died we'd all be expecting them to have grief we'd all be expecting them to act out we would support them we would provide grief and loss counseling we would provide all these different things extra support at school this is what happens in parental alienation it is a grief process that they go through and yet we think that they're okay because they say they are or because someone's telling them they've got to say that they're okay and we accept that and that to me is unacceptable because we should know that they're not okay that secure attachment has been ripped out of their lives and you're choosing to believe from one or two sessions which they could easily have been fed what to say and we know abusers do that again we're trained to know that abusers manipulate what other people say they use fear they use reward they use lots of different tactics to ensure that their secret is kept and yet we're not spotting that in these cases so even if you believe everything, even if you believe all the reasons that are given for the parent no longer being in life, or you believe that a child doesn't want that parent in their life, you have to know that that's not normal, and you have to know that they need support around that, that you wouldn't just remove a child and not put support in place, you wouldn't just expect a parent to die and no support to be in place, so why is this any different? Why are we not providing the same level of support that we would in those cases that is what infuriates me it's professional suicide in a lot of cases I, i've had ones where professionals have gone over and above but ended up in relationships because the boundaries are crossed narcissists do not have boundaries narcissists will 
ev treat everyone exactly the same way. They will manipulate, they will love bomb, they will tell you that you're the greatest person ever, flatter you, be, be absolutely the best person ever. But then five minutes later, they can absolutely hate your guts if you do something that they disagree with. And our profession, all the other professions, you're all part of this. You all need to piece your pieces together. You all need to talk and communicate. You need to remember your child development theory. You need to understand that these behaviours are not normal. And if it was just about one person, why did they alienate all the rest of the family? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Again, these are the questions you need to be asking yourself. And the impact for professional parental alienation is reputation is going down the toilet it's you, you read about it you read people that are being um subjected to parental alienation i've just spoken to a lady who her case was astonishing and she's even had an apology from the agency because it was that badly handled and we can't carry on like that our job is to protect children and even as a society our job is to protect children so no matter what what profession you are in if you are involved in a child's life or a family's life your role is to do what's best for that child and that what should always be what's at the center and by by making all the, these mistakes and by not being aware and understanding the complexities of parental alienation that we are failing children in this so let's have a discussion ask me questions Tell me your feedback, tell me your experiences, if you're a professional, what are your issues, let me know. I do want to help, I, I'm not here to slate professionals, I still consider myself a social worker at heart and so I'm on your side, I just want you to be, I don't want you to be slated, I want you to be congratulated on how well you've done. So do get in touch. Um, if you are experiencing parental alienation, you know, you want to know more, email me at inquiries at the, the nurturingcoach.co.uk. Apologies for that. Speak soon. Bye-bye.